Welcome. Today we're going to talk about surface area of prisms and cylinders. The surface area of a three-dimensional figure is the sum of the areas of all of its surfaces. One way to find the surface area of a space figure is to find the area of its net. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a rectangular prism. And the net of a rectangular prism, if we go to draw it, would look something like this. So if we were to fold that up, if that was made of cardboard, say, and we folded it up, we would get a box with dimensions of 6 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 4 centimeters. So our first job is to try and label the sides of this net with the proper dimensions and then calculate the area of each piece. So I would say that because six centimeters is the width there, I'm going to make that the width right here. And that's going to carry up. So if this measures six centimeters, then so does this one and this one, etc. all the way. They all measure six. Then the sides are going to alternate. If that's five, the rest of the sides are going to alternate with four, five, four, five until it wraps around. Um, so let's find the area of the individual boxes. Starting at the bottom here, we have five centimeters by six centimeters, so that would have an area of 30 square centimeters. And above that, it's four centimeters by six centimeters, so that would be 24. And then again, five by six is 30, four by six is 24. Now the wings, because this side is four centimeters, therefore the connecting side, they have to match up so this drawing is not to scale, but that's going to be 4 centimeters as well. So we have 4 by 5 on this wing, which is going to be 4 times 5 is 20. And the opposite side is also 4 times 5 is 20. So now we can find the surface area by adding the individual areas of the individual rectangles. 24 plus 20 plus 30 plus 20 plus 24 plus 30 for a grand total surface area of 148 square centimeters. I uh, will give you an example. Why don't you try this one on your own? Start by drawing a net and labeling the pieces and find the area of each piece. Try that on your own and then check back with me. Okay, so let's see how you did. I would say that the base will be 20 inches in this particular one and then we're going to alternate 8, 5, uh, 8 along the sides. So. 8 times 20 at the bottom here is going to be 160 square inches. 5 times 20 is 100. And then 160 and 100 repeat. As far as the wing, that would be 8 times 5, which is 40. And the other wing as well would be 40. So pretty convenient that 40 plus 160 equals 200. So we're going to be able to do that a couple times. So that would give us 400 plus 100 plus 100 or 600 square inches. Okay, well, fasten your seatbelt. Uh, we're going to try an oddly shaped three-dimensional object here. And there's a different method that I recommend here, which is to think about it from the different angles. Because we have the top would match the bottom. It would look something like this if you look straight down on it. From the front, it would look like like that, right? Just without the 3D nature to it. And from the right side, how would it look? It would look kind of like that if you're just looking straight at it. Um, now, lucky for us, from the bottom, it would look exactly like the top. The back would look like the front. And the left side would look just like the right side. So we could actually count the individual squares because we're measuring area, which is counted in squares, and add them up. So, eight on the top plus 8 on the bottom, plus 8 on the front, 8 on the back, 6 on the right, 6 on the left, for a total of 44 square centimeters. Okay, now for the most interesting one, the surface area of a cylinder. So we're going to draw a net of the cylinder. And it would look something like a rectangle, right? peeling this, the label off of a soup can, opening it up, it would give you a rectangle, plus the top of the can, 
and the bottom of the can. Now, let's label the parts that we know. It looks like the radius is 5, so that would go there and there. Those are both 5. The circles are identical. The height of the label is 25. We're going to need one more dimension. We're going to need to find this, the, the width of the label. And for now, I'm going to call it x. But I think that x, uh, well, I think it's going to be equal to the circumference of the circle because it would wrap once around. So if we could open up that circumference and lay it out flat, it would equal x. So we need our circumference formula. The circumference is what x will equal. And there it is, the circumference of that circle. So that's going to be equal to 2 pi r. So x is going to equal 2 times pi times the radius. The radius here is 5. So we're going to have 2 times 3.14 times 5. Take a moment on your calculator and see what you get. I bet it's 31.4 because I see 2 times 5 is 10. And 10 times 3.14 is 31.4. Okay, that's the circumference. So we'll replace x with 31.4. Now we can find the area of that rectangle pretty easily by multiplying length times width or base times height. That would be the lateral area. Lateral area equals base times height, 25 times 31.4. Try that on your calculator. Lateral area equals 785. Now for the circles. A circle area formula is pi times the radius squared. In this case, 3.14 times 5 times 5. 25 times 3.14 equals 78.5. And those areas can be um, written onto the diagram. Let's do that. The lateral area of 785, that 785 goes in the rectangle. The 78.5 is the area of both circles. And so to find the total surface area, we're going to add those three numbers together. The lateral area plus 2 times the circle equals the surface area. Lateral area was 785 plus 2 times 78.5, which equals 157. So add those together, we get the surface area is 942.